say. So I will hand you straight over to David Parker from the Labour Party. Uh, can I thank uh, the EPMU for putting this on and can I also thank the uh, manufacturing exporters who've come out to uh, show support for what's a very important issue for New Zealand. I think we sometimes overcomplicate the economy. The economy is but a collection of us. It's a collection of individuals and the businesses that we individually and collectively own, plus the government. And if the economy doesn't work for ordinary people and for the businesses that employ those people, then the economy's not working properly. And that's the position that we've got in New Zealand, is that the economy is not working for ordinary people. Wages are lower than they are in other countries which are more successful. Our manufacturing exporters who are key to a high wage economy aren't able to pay higher wages because their profitability is inhibited by some of the current economic settings that we have in New Zealand. When you don't have an economy working for ordinary people, you have people who are able to leave. And we've had 160,000 people leave New Zealand for Australia in the last four years. There are things that can be done and ought to be done. An economy has to grow if we are to cater for the increasing number of people that we have in our country and for the increasing costs of keeping our people well as they age. So we do need to have growth in our economy. In order to have growth in our economy and the jobs that pay our, that, that uh, people can earn enough to earn a living wage, we have to have profitable businesses. So what do, we do, what do we need to do and why are we having a discussion about manufacturing? I'm pretty annoyed that the, uh, the National Party tries to confuse the issue of sophisticated manufacturing from the non-primary produce area with all manufacturing including primary processing. Now, I'm, I'm not criticising primary processing. It's actually a very sophisticated industry. Fonterra does a good job. Uh, but it is true that we cannot make it in the world on the back of primary produce alone. We just can't. It's obvious. If you look at the contribution that comes to our economy from primary produce, it's, it's incredibly fundamentally important to New Zealand. But we will not be wealthy enough as a country if we rely upon that alone. Neither can we just rely upon the service sectors. There is a dignity in all work, but in the end, service sectors rely upon the productive economy. Whether it's the accountants down on the main street of Queen Street, or the lawyers, or whether it's the, the people working in the, in the um, service industry caring for our elderly, or whether it's people that are pulling coffees. These are all dignified jobs, but none of those jobs can exist if there isn't a productive output from our economy. So at the heart of the strength of an economy is your productive output, and if we could make it on the back of primary processing alone, then we'd be in clover in New Zealand, but we can't. So what do we do need to change? Well, we need to acknowledge that outside of agriculture, manufacture is shrinking. Since 2008, in real terms, our manufacturers in one sector, the, the, the ones that sort of moderately transform things, they've gone down by 15%, and the really clever high-value manufacturing exports, they've dropped by, 15%, uh, by 10%. And in both of these areas, we are losing jobs. All of the fat has gone out of the system in those areas. And I meet with a number of these. In fact, I've been doing the rounds in the last month quite intensively, and they're all telling me there's no fat left in the system. The next thing to go is more workers. And that's what we're seeing throughout our country at the moment, because manufacturers cannot afford to employ staff because they're not learning enough. What do we need to change? We need some pro-growth tax reform. Tax is always seen as a, as a dirty word by the right. Actually, no matter what the total level is of tax, it should be appropriately structured so that it encourages jobs and our productive exports rather than speculation. At the moment it doesn't. That's why we need a capital gains tax in New Zealand. It's also fair because there are wealthy people in New Zealand who pay lower rates of tax than new people here because they invest in a part of the economy that's not taxed. We need, a capital gain, uh, we need a research and development tax credit so that we're encouraging that money to go into the right part of our economy, the bit that grows the jobs and grows our exports. We need to uh, change government procurement. We heard about that this morning. It's not just in the manufacturing sector. You know, it's obvious that we're losing jobs there because of inappropriate government procurement practices. But did you guys go know that in the ICT sector, the ICT recently went to the government and said, hey, please let us have a look in at these big government contracts for computer programs being written for, uh, for um, government departments. They were rebuffed and they were told that the government won't help. They've just got to struggle along for themselves. We need to address the exchange rate. 
I was um, recently at the OECD where one of the trade economists said something which was pretty obvious. He said the role of government is to create the environment where people can employ people and people can be employed. And that in order to do that, you've got to give some certainty of future to people in business so that they can invest and employ people. Now, inflation is obviously one of the factors that has to be taken into account, but so is the exchange rate. And when the exchange rate is the more pressing problem in society because your exporters can't earn enough to employ people, then you should be addressing the exchange rate and not putting inflation ahead of it. And that's all we're essentially saying. We're saying that inflation targeting, having been put ahead of other important matters of economic management, is past its use-by date. We should not be surprised. These things move in cycles. We used to have the gold standard. That stopped working at the time of the Great Depression. Question earlier, I think it was from Chris Trotter saying, should we look at 80 years past? Well, we should do, because that's when the gold standard was kicked out, because it was no longer working. Then we moved to Bretton Woods arrangements, which worked really well, saw unparalleled prosperity in the world for many decades, and they stopped working. Then we moved to inflation targeting, and that stopped working, so we need to move on. Industrial policy needs more than an R&D tax credit, needs more than government procurement, it needs more than uh, um, uh, better linkages for apprenticeships. It does need other incentives that don't go across the whole of the economy. They can't be afforded across the whole of the economy. They are needed in some parts of the economy, and that is an area that my colleague David Cunliffe is working hard on and will be producing more policy for the next election. If we change nothing, nothing will change. Politics is important. You have to hold to account the people who control the levers of power. The levers that we are talking about here can only be pulled by governments. Businesses cannot do that for themselves. Businesses can do a lot by themselves. Employees can do a lot by themselves, but they can't change tax settings, monetary policy, or some of these other things that I've talked about. I think that's probably my time is just about up. I'm gonna say one more thing. I think we are being saps at the moment in the world. We face competitive devaluation abroad, the old paradigm is not being pursued overseas. We've got competitive devaluation abroad. We've got the largest trade surplus in the history of the world in China, and they're holding their currency low. We've got the Swiss printing money. We've got the Americans printing money. We've had the Germans profiting for years off a euro held low because of problems in Greece and Portugal. Uh, we've got the British printing money. Uh, that's been held responsible for the devaluation of their currency which means they've got the strongest car industry in Europe, which employs thousands and thousands of people. We face competitive devaluation abroad, have done for years, and we've got to respond. Otherwise, we're the ones that will suffer and we'll lose more people.